Hello everyone, back with me again, Dennis Wang, and any cubic photon mono 4K is in the house. I'm going to move Sony 4K to another desk, and then I'm going to unbox it, and we shall see what's included in the box. And after that, I will check the build quality of this printer. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, like this video, and share if you want. Thank you. So this is what is included in the box. We have a power supply here, some gloves, funnels for filtering the resin and nope this is not included in the box this is my paper and uh, we have the leveling paper and some manual installation and user manuals we have this allen key here some useless mask <laughs> the flash disk we have two scraper, the plastic and the metal scraper or spatula. And this is to clean your LCD screen if you want to install the screen protection or screen guard. And this is very interesting that any cubic include a screen guard in the kit. And also an additional extra black insulation tape to secure your screen. Now, let's have a look at the printer. The casing is yellow clear acrylics. And we can see the switch is on the right side of the printer along with the USB port. Anycubic Photon 104K has a single linear rail, the same as the previous model. And for the build plate there is no stopper behind but that is fine as long as you could place it correctly and for the build plate surface there is no sandblast surface the resin tank is made from plastic and any cubic photon mono 4k recommended only use the plastic resin tank and this is a very nice feature so if you forget to install the resin tank thumb screw you will not have an accident and there is a stopper behind the resin tank over here so you could easily place your resin tank the sensor for the Z is well hidden at the back here. And yeah, that is a lot of lubricant for the lid screw. And for the screen, it is slightly lower compared to the surrounding platform. The resin tank has the level indicator here. It appears on both sides and at one corner there is a funnel for pouring your resin back into the bottle now let's check the quality for the whole build arm backlash and the linear rail I'm going to press up one millimeter twice Now press down again, one millimeter twice. Back to zero, not bad. I'm going to wobble it. Okay. Now I'm going to push and pull the build arm from the side. Well, this is as expected from single linear rail. Now I'm going to do the light intensity test, but for your information, I have installed the screen guard and I also use the extra black tape to cover the edge of the screen guard. So everything looks very neat. And uh, this is very nice and cubic. Now let's start the exposure.
okay quite uneven but that's fine remember this is a budget printer this is looking good no light bleeding at the side and the back of the printer Now let's see the touch screen and let us navigate. This is the print to load your file and print. And for the system, language, service, info, the tools. This is to manually move up and down the build plate and it has a homing button. This is to, to detect, you could choose three different kind of exposure to check the LCD screen and then this is to set the height of the Z this is very helpful when you are leveling your build plate now let's check this box you could set your UV power level uh, on the previous light intensity test it is on 100% I guess I will adjust this uh, sorry, I mean I will adjust this to my liking for the resin exposure calibration and for the door sensor There is a sticker at the back of the Acrylic case if you remove it it will automatically pause the printer. So I prefer to turn it off This is to on and off the sound So I want to do the light intensity test again, but this time I set the UV power at 60%. Now let's do a full exposure. Still around 200. Yes, I think I need to do further adjustment for the UV power to my, to calibrate my resin exposure. Okay, so actually I was going to wait until midnight to record the noise level test. But I do a little test on my own and I realized that I don't hear any fan sound or feel any gust of wind and let me show you why and as it turns out there is no fan at all inside the printer <laughs> okay I'm not sure if I'm receiving a defect product or uh, any cubic is not putting any fan inside photon mono 4k at all See, there is no fan. I have checked the side too. There is no side of any fan at all. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about the long-term effect for a printer without any fan. But I guess I will find it out during my print test. Uh, because I cannot find any information about multiple exposure for any cubic photon mono 4K, I decide to make my own RER file and then I print this. It will not show any exposure. But if I stop this print and then load another file to print and then I stop this print And then I load the RERF file again. And now it will finally print the file. And yes, we have multiple exposure capability built in Photon Mono 4K. Now I only need to figure out the correct grid to place the exposure object. So I finally figured out the grid pattern for multiple exposure on 
support on Mono 4K. I will put link in video description if you want to use this file. And to be able to print multiple exposure, I would suggest that you print this test file first. Start the print and at the first layer of exposure, just stop it. And then install your resin tank, install your build plate, and you could start your print. Okay. So on test file, do not install your resin tank and build plate, do a dry print and after that, install resin tank and build plate and then click print. Well, hopefully in future firmware update, this problem could be fixed. Now let's have a little look at Photon Workshop, the settings, slice parameter. We have the entire lights, the gray lever, and image blur settings. I'm going to test this on my print test. And for the speed settings and the lift distance, we could choose advanced. And here, if you look at this, the 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And here's the explanation. So step 0 is the stage when print platform is moving near the curing phase. So it moves relatively slow to avoid affecting the printing. And step one is the stage that blah, 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 blah. Okay, but I want to show you something very weird. If you look at my settings here, I set all at 0 0.5 seconds. Oh, sorry, forget this one. And 0 0.5, save. 0 0.5. Zero point five. 0 0.5 okay all is at 0 0.5 the leaf i'm i'm not changing the leaf distance i'm going to save now i will slice this object save as stable one and it shows the approximate print time is four hours 42 minutes okay and this is what's shown in the printer. Now I'm going to test again. I will change the speed again to two millimeters per second. It's like 120 millimeters per minute. Sorry, this should be at 0 0.5. Okay. I'm going to save and I will slice again. I'm going to save it at stable two. And now approximate print time is also four hours, 42 minutes. And this is what is shown in the printer. Now I will raise the print speed again into four and then four, four and then four. Enter and then save. Okay. Advance, save. Now let's slice it again as stable three. <laughs> again it shows four hours and 42 minutes and this is what is shown in the printer the same exact time <laughs> uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> okay let us wait for any software updates or firmware update now i'm going to print this leveling tester let me know if you guys are noticing any flexing from the build arm or the whole Z tower during printing the bottom exposure. That is where the highest pulling force. And I'm going to end this video here to do lots of test print and I will show the print result in the next video. So kindly subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification so you don't miss out the print result. Like this video and share if you want. Thank you.
By the way, I also want to give a shout out to David Sibring. Thank you for becoming my first patron. Thank you very much.